I've always wanted to make a video about my childhood as a sick man because the life I live today is greatly influenced by how I grew up. I had a series of questions from you guys that I will be answering today. So the very first question is an open question which says tell us about your childhood. My childhood I would say was very exciting. I grew up in a happy family with a father and a mother. My father is a teacher, my mom is a farmer. I grew up basically in a village where with a thing a small community of about 2000 people. The spirit of togetherness was fostered among us and I believe that my parents' priority for their children was education, good health. Like we had all the basic amenities you could think of. We had good health, we had good shoes, we had good food. Um, on that note, I think I had a childhood to say um, was better because there was actually nothing that our parents did not provide for, for us. Were you rejected as a child? Was I rejected as a child? No, I was never rejected, but instead I was loved as a child. Um, neglected, yes, to a certain extent. I grew up in a family of seven. I'm the second child. Um, you guys know, as I say, the second child is always uh, the one that is ne ne it's always neglected. Um, but then we are always the most intelligent ones, right? Not even though because we are sigmas and all the stereotypes. But then I just believe that the, the second bonds are always uh, the intelligent ones in the family. And the next question says, did you ever feel being neglected? Maybe emotionally, health-wise or financially? Um, let me start with the last two. Health-wise and financially. Financially, no, because I had almost everything I wanted. But then, like Oliver Twist, we always want more than what we are given, which is normal, right? Um, uh, I think I was a sick child growing up, even now, but then my parents took care of me. My siblings, too, they did a good part in taking care of my health situation. Looking at my emotional needs from parents, I think that I was never given that much time. Because earlier on, my parents gave me a lot of responsibilities. And I believe that they kind of took that for granted. So emotionally, I kind of felt uh, left back. But now, I understand this because as a sick man, um, we are really cut off from the emotional world. So even if they were showing the emotions, maybe at that tender age, or maybe reflecting now, I might be biased a bit. Or I, But then, I feel that I did not have enough. What is being neglected feel like by friends, siblings, parents or family? The truth is, growing up, my father was um, a businessman. My mom too was a businesswoman. And growing up too in a small village, they had a lot of influence. So because of them, I think we kind of covered. And being neglected was not really felt. Among friends, I believe that I was always the leader of my group or if I was not really, uh, leading but it was always revolving around me with friends with family with siblings because at an early age many people were always looking up to me for I don't know why but then reflecting back I see that maybe because of who we are as sick mass, we are that then that age we are able to reason more than Others, because if you look at my friends that I associated with, were older than me. So I think because of that, they treated me with, um, how should I put it? Well, they considered maybe my age and stuff. So I just believe that maybe it was that streak of luck because I used to hang out with older friends or older people because I, I think I was really loved by every, almost everybody. So were you bullied as a child? Um, bullied as a child, no. Insulted as a child, yes. Like I earlier mentioned, my dad was uh, a school, uh, he was a head teacher when I was still going to school. So because he was there and I was the son of the teacher, the son of a businessman, I had that, you know. And then most of the friends I had in school 
were bigger than me. So automatically I had protection from them. And now because of that, I, I could do the assignments and help them do some homework, solve some questions for them. That's how we balanced that equation. But then I was never bullied. But I think that even though I was the smallest, I've always been the smallest in class, the youngest and like that in my class. But then I've never been bullied or looked down on. I'm quick to understanding people, quick to understanding characters, so with that I can easily adjust to what people want from me and then use that for my own advantage. I think that's how I succeeded in school and that's how I've been succeeding. Being bullied was not that often for me. I think I've been bullied one or twice, insulted a couple of times, but bullied like everyday kind of stuff, no. The question says, what are your sources of motivation? My main source of motivation was my curiosity. I used to ask a lot of questions. I used to wonder a lot. I used to, I was motivated. I had interest in so many things. So I believe with that I had, I was motivated, you know, keep learning. And then looking back, I see that because of me being a Sigma, Sigmas are always motivated by novelty, right? The ability to learn new things. Um, growing up really in the village gave me that chance, that liberty to experiment so much on things. By then too, because we were into business, we owned um, a grinding mill. We had a provision store and a bar. I used to be the one managing the stores with, together with my siblings and my parents. But most of the times I was the person that was there. So with that, I met so many people at that tender age. I learned a lot. Um, how did you deal with failure or success as a child? There's something I've never loved or I, I don't like to experience that much is failure. I really hate, I don't like failing. I really, really don't like failing. Up till now, I think I'm kind of allergic to failing and lazy people. The way I, I dealt with failure was um, to keep on trying because back then I always wanted to be the best. I had so much interest, so much things to explore. So with looking at school and failing, I think most of the times when I came back, even I had to fail just like basic sums in class or perform poorly. When I came back, the person that would notice that first was my mom. Which su succeeding to me was normal, was kind of normal because my parents made it in such a way that it was compulsory for me to be successful, right? So when I was successful, there was nothing new that was added or said or done. So I had to be successful. So success was normal. So I was always striving to be successful and even striving to be the best. Yeah. I think this one is a good is a good question. It says that how did others see you? Yeah, I think at the, that early age, um, even up to now, most people see me as smart, intelligent, all knowing. They always come to me for advice. They always want to hear my opinion on your stuff. And then my parents were very outspoken about my performance. Uh, the school, especially my academic performance, it was not hidden. Everybody knew me because I started selling at the store we had at the age of, um, was it, I think it was seven or eight. I used to go and sell for the whole day. So with that level of, I think, smart, because, you know, as Sigmas, we are born intelligent. That is normal. We have uh, the mental faculties. To be able to carry out these mental tasks even at a very tender age so i believe that um, that is how people saw me to conclude that i think my mom was very protective of me not only like me alone but she was really protective of her children and i think when it came to the protection part i had more of it because of my health condition or problems and um, because of who i was uh, because of how smart or intelligent I was at that age. I think I started writing love letters for all that, for the grown up guys in the quarters. Uh, but, you know, in the village, not everybody was literate, right? Nobody, not everybody could read and write. So, because I could do that, I was, I like, 
I used to write love letters. You know, like write these love letters to these guys and send to them. My mom would be like, stop my childhood, you guys, would blah, blah, blah. And it was fun to me because I had that, that, that exposure led me to understand so many things about, um, well, men, women, sex and stuff like that at a very young age. So I had a good knowledge of it. I could, you know, I don't know if was it for good or bad, but then my mom, she really tried protecting me from those things, um, but then I bet to be sincere, I kind of enjoyed them not to a certain extent writing those letters and interpreting, getting the visions of uh, how people wrote letters and sent to their lovers and stuff like that. It was fun. It was fun, but then 